All right, guys, it is Monday, May 11th, and a few things have transpired over the weekend. It was Mother's Day weekend, and um, I hope it was a great weekend with your mother. I hope that you were able to show much love to her and to the mother of your children. Um, usually uh, around this time of the year, around Mother's Day weekend in Lakeland, Florida, they have what they call Mayfair. It's a big like art exhibition um, outdoors, and it's, uh, it takes place around a lake, Lake Mirror. No, Lake Morton here in Lakeland, and it's uh, something I enjoy going to just to get out, and it's just really nice. It's usually sweltering hot, but it's been, the weather's really nice this year, but uh, they didn't have the Mayfair because of this whole, you know, thing going on. You know, you can't say that word because it'll demonetize your video. Can you believe that? Um, anyway, so I, 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 you know, I always look forward to going to that, but couldn't do that this year. Um, but I hope Mother's Day was good for you. Did you watch the UFC? Did you watch the UFC uh, uh, Saturday night? Because uh, it's been, you know, on hiatus for a little bit because of all this going on. And uh, it was they, these were pretty big fights. And it was a little peculiar to watch because there was no audience. You know, I'm a big fan of Sam Alvey because I got to see him fight uh, against a Polish kickboxer uh, a year or two ago in Orlando, and uh, I just was amazed at how quick he won, and uh, and he's from the Orlando area, and I've communicated with him a little bit back and forth on uh, Instagram, and he's such a nice guy, and it was funny when he walked out into the crowd, he acted like they were there, you know, he was like, <laughs> he's just funny, he's just a funny guy, but the big fights to watch, he, well, Sam Alvey ended up losing, smiling Sam Alvey, it's too bad, but um, the big fights, were the Dominic Cruz Cejudo fight and the, uh, the even bigger one, the Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje fight? And uh, did you get to watch it? Were you surprised at Ferguson's loss over Gaethje? Put your answer down below. Um, I, I I didn't. I don't really root for either one. I'm not a big fan of either one of them. But uh, uh, I wasn't surprised by the outcome of uh, Ferguson's, Ferguson's loss. Um, Ferguson is, is a formidable force, but uh, I kind of felt like in the, the fight previous to this, he was looking um, a little tired, but that's that my opinion about that might not mean anything. I think it might have been due to a weight cut, and um, so I don't know. I, I It was a good fight. It was a really good fight, I can tell you that. It was so well matched. Gaethje handed it to Ferguson, and Ferguson hung in there, man. Tough. Both these guys are so tough. It was uh, it was probably the fight of the year, you know, so far. The year's only about halfway over with, a little less than that. But uh, it was a great fight. I loved it. It was well worth watching. And um, so now, now, Gaethje is is going to be fighting Khabib. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Who do you think will win that fight? Do you think it'll be Gaethje or Khabib? Personally, I think that uh, that Khabib will win that. If it comes down to a matter of stamina, I think that Khabib will win that. Khabib is strong. But if Khabib can't get Gaethje down, that might be another matter. If Gaethje lands his shots, it could be lights out for Khabib. I don't know. Khabib is so tough, man. He's so tough. And, um, you know... I know that a lot of people probably lost a, a, some, a great deal of money on the ferguson Gaethje fight because I saw a lot of chatter, a lot of hubbub about it, and uh, people saying, I've got, before the fight ever happened, I've got $100 on him, I've got a certain amount. People were betting all sorts of money, man, and they, they probably lost it just a fortune. But uh, I'm not a betting man, and, I, and, I'm, and the reason why is because I always, you know, the, the ones I root for never win. I'm just terrible at picking them out. So, you know, I... Uh, I, I think it's any man's game when it comes to the Khabib uh, Gaethje fight. I'm definitely going to see that. And then, what did you think about the Cruz, the Dominic Cruz uh, Henry Cejudo fight? What do you think about that? Did you, do you think it got stopped too quickly? I I think it got stopped a little too quickly, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, that's my thoughts on the fight. That's my thoughts on the fight. I, I watch every UFC I possibly can, you know, all the pay-per-views and, and whatnot. I, I'm just a big fan of that. So put your comments below. Tell me what you think of all that. If you're wondering what I have in my beer today, because I like to mention that, give you guys a chance to uh, to uh, uh, take part 
and uh, and collecting the same kind of things that I I like because I I'm going to only share with you the things that uh, I truly like a lot and I'm part of and help you can, I can help you save some money on today I'm wearing uh, Husky brand and uh, Husky beard sorry Husky beard and grooming products in my beard I started off with uh, putting conditioner in my beard uh, they're um, original. And then I put the Zin beard oil in. Really great stuff. Smells fantastic. It's a cologne scent. You like that a lot. I gave that a chance to sit in my beard for about five minutes. And I turned around and put the uh, the uh, whipped beard cream in my beard. Great, you're, you know, great stuff. It smells so good. If you're interested in that for yourself, you want to look at it, just go to huskybeard.com. Uh, and, um, you know, you can look at a, a wide selection of uh, products that they have there. And if you use my code BOSWELL15, you're going to save 15% on your order. Okay, so there you go. They're not sponsoring this video, but I am an affiliate of theirs, and uh, I really like them a lot. So I think you will too, and that's what, I'm, that's what I have in my beer today. Anyway, so last night, I watched the movie I've been I've been saying I'm going to watch for a long time. It's Ex Machina. I think I'm saying that right. I think I've heard somebody say it that way. Um, and, uh, man, I regret not watching it sooner. It was such a good movie. Have you seen it? Um, it was, let me tell you what it's about. I'm gonna, let me read it to you right off of IMDb. Here's the, the description to the movie, and maybe this will pique your interest. It says, Caleb Smith a programmer at a huge internet company wins a contest that enables him to spend a week at the private estate of Nathan Bateman, his firm's brilliant CEO. When he arrives, Caleb learns that he has been chosen to be the human component in a Turing test to determine the capabilities and consciousness of Ava, a beautiful robot, and she is beautiful, by the way. Alicia Van, uh, Vikander, I think that's how you say her name. She played in Tomb, Tomb Raider. So, uh, however, it seems to become evident that Ava is far more self-aware and deceptive than either man imagined. The Turing uh, test is, is an actual thing in real life. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a test that is supposed to determine whether a computer or a robot is capable of human emotions. And that's what... Uh, the, the uh, character in the stories in this movie is supposed to be doing Caleb Smith. He's there to test it. And the, the movie really makes you think a lot. Now, I don't believe that they'll ever get am androids, robots, whatever technology to that point. I don't think, I don't think God will let it get to that point. I think he has other plans, but it, the movie is interesting and entertaining. Nonetheless, it's one of those movies I'd like to sit down and have a round table conversation about because there's so many takeaways from it. I bring this up just to let you know that if you're looking for a movie to watch, that's a good one. All right. Tell me what your thoughts are about it if you've already seen it. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you'll enjoy it a lot. I have a friend. Or I had a friend named Doc. He, uh, he was in his early 80s, early to mid 80s. And um, I met him by way of just going to McDonald's every morning uh, on my way out to my area uh, when I'm working. And I'd stop in McDonald's, get some get some tea, take it with me. As I'm walking out, there'd be these three older gentlemen sitting at a table, and they would start conversations with me. And it got to be a pretty normal thing. I became good friends with them. Uh, uh, Charlie and Bob were probably in their 70s, and Doc was in his 80s. And uh, and so I just became fast friends with all of them. I looked forward to to meeting up with them uh, for a very brief uh, amount of time every morning, Monday through Friday. So I ran into Charlie at some point and found out that Doc had died in January. And uh, Doc was one of the nicest people you'd ever meet in your life. Ever. He, in fact, he bought me my first piano. Him and Charlie, uh, when they found out that I had played the piano like 20 years ago, they said, you need to be playing the piano again. I said, I'm really not interested. Well, they bought me a, a, a small, inexpensive spinet. Um, to get me started again, it was very generous of them and it, they did a good thing is now I'm back up to a proficient level. And, uh, I used to go over to Doc's house and play for him and he'd invite his neighbors over. He had a, a baby grand Yamaha piano and, uh, I'd go over and play for them and entertain them. And, uh, but Doc would every morning, Doc would go out 
and he would buy numerous cups of coffee and take them to shut-ins ar around the city. People that he knew. It wasn't a program that he was a part of. It's just something he did. People he knew. He networked himself. And it wasn't for his own gain. He was just a nice guy. Well, uh, Doc retired from the Watson Clinic um, doctor's offices here in town. It's very, you know, prestigious, uh, well-known uh, uh, medical clinics here in, in Lakeland and uh, in Winter Haven. That's kind of this area, Central Florida area. And, um, you know, he, I guess many, many years ago before he went into the medical field and went to school for that, he also went to school for woodworking. Wood, he was very, very good at it. And the, he'd make these fantastic uh, bowls and trinkets and even he'd even make doors and and uh things like this and he was his his work was so beautiful i went to his house and saw the shop he had set up and even in his 80s he was still he was still grinding out woodwork that was just so beautiful and i told him he should be selling it but he wouldn't do that he'd give them away and um anyway so um i found out that doc had passed away and and in in january and so then uh, I ran into Charlie again. I had, I needed him to uh, to assess some car work that I needed done on it, on it because he has a, a mechanical shop. And so I asked him. I said, "Did you ever go to Doc's funeral?" He says, "No, didn't uh, didn't have a funeral for Doc." I said, "Really? Why not?" He says, "Well, that was his wife's doing." And uh, I said, "Oh, really?" He said, "Yeah." He said, uh, uh, Doc had uh, planned out his funeral and everything just the way he wanted it. He wanted to build his own coffin. He wanted to build his own coffin in a certain way with a certain kind of pine. And he wanted to make these certainly these wooden hinges that each grandchild would have. And they would, they would put into the lid of the coffin um, at the funeral. And he had this all worked out. He had this beautiful funeral worked out. He says, but that didn't happen either. Because I told Doc... You know, Doc, you might want to get started. You're not getting any younger. He says, but Doc didn't have enough time. He didn't have enough time. So he didn't build the coffin. His wife cremated him. He specifically asked not to be cremated. And I don't know what to think about that. I just don't know what to think about that because I, I don't want to be too judgmental. She may have had her reasons. Cremation is certainly less expensive. But I don't think that would have been an issue. And I know that they never, I know that they haven't had a good marriage in quite a number of years. And the only reason I mention any of this is because they'll never see this video. But I'm stumped by it. I feel sad for Doc. I feel really sad for Doc. And I wish it could have gone his way. Because I think he certainly deserved it. Well, there's one man who had a similar idea. And it actually came to fruition for him. Back in 1943, there was a man named C.A. Widener that died. Let me, let me tell you what it says here in a, a time excerpt. It says, in West Plains, Missouri, the walnut tree, which C.A. Widener planted in 1893, went to its planned reward. His coffin was made from it. That was a man who actually planted a tree for the whole purpose of making a coffin for himself. And he, he fulfilled that at the end of his life. He, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I read that and I thought it applied to the story that I just told you. So I don't really know what to think about all that. But, um, you know, uh, do you think about stuff like that? Do you think about how you want things to end in your life? Do you make plans for such things? Some people don't want to think about that. They don't even want to confront it. But, um, you know, part of doing YouTube is all about that for me. Because YouTube's probably going to be around long after I'm gone. And this will still be a way for my children to get to hear my voice, to hear my thoughts, and to know what I think. Not only my children, but my grandchildren. And hopefully if YouTube is still around by that time, their children. Anyway, that's my thoughts for today. I really had more. I'll probably share more with you later. But those, those are the things I'm thinking. And uh, I just wanted to um, run it by you and let you make your comments below. All right, guys, I've got to go. I've got things I've got to do. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you in the flip-flop. All right. If you haven't uh, liked this video yet, please do so and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.